Welcome to the NCFCA Debate Judge Orientation. We are the National Christian Forensics and Communications Association, the NCFCA, a National Christian Homeschooling Speech and Debate League. Our goal is to teach students to address life issues from a biblical worldview in a manner that glorifies God. Homeschool students ages 13 through 18 are competing today, and we so appreciate your time. Thank you for making a tremendous investment in the lives of our students. Many people come into their first debate experience a little unsure about their qualifications to judge. But let me reassure you, you are qualified. Here, let me show you. Do you have an opinion about any of the communicators you see here? See, you've already been judging communication. The burden is on the student to clearly communicate with you. Our goal today is to equip you by giving you the proper tools to evaluate our students. In this orientation, we will cover the following points. What is NCFCA debate? How to listen to or flow a debate round? How to make a decision? How to fill out the ballot? And we will finish by giving you a few guidelines to remember. So what exactly is NCFCA debate? It is respectful argumentation between two teams on opposing sides of an idea. The affirmative team argues for the topic, while the negative team opposes the topic or the affirmative's position. Debate teams will alternate sides over multiple rounds during the day. NCFCA offers two styles of debate, Lincoln-Douglas value debate and team policy debate. Lincoln-Douglas deals with a clash of values, while Team Policy deals with a change in policy. Lincoln-Douglas has one-person teams, one-on-one -on -one debate, and Team Policy has two-person teams, two-on-two -two debates. Lincoln-Douglas lasts approximately 45 minutes, and Team Policy lasts approximately an hour and a half. In your judge packet, you will find a ballot, a flow sheet, which is for taking notes in the debate round, a copy of the Debate Rules and Ethics Guidelines, a Speaker Point Guide, and Orientation Notes. When the debate round begins, the debaters will introduce themselves, and you will record their names on the ballot. You may ask the debaters to write their own names in the appropriate spots if you wish. There will be a timekeeper in the round who will sit near you and give hand signals to the debaters. Before the round begins, debaters may ask if you'd like to share a little bit about yourself or if you have any judging experience. This is the debater's way of getting to know their audience. Please note that there will only be one judge in each preliminary round, but each judge, each team will be judged by multiple judges over the course of the tournament. In NCFCA, real-world conversational style communication is valued. As we mentioned earlier, the burden of communication is on the debater, and debaters are responsible for clarifying any terminology they use in the round. As the judge, you will be required to determine a winner at the end of the round. Let's talk about how to make that decision. First, before the round begins, set aside any personal bias you may have. Next, listen to the debate and take notes. You'll evaluate the debate round in the same way you make normal, everyday decisions. As you evaluate the round, please judge the round based upon issues entered in the round, and then decide which team best supports their position. Taking notes in a debate round is usually called flowing and is a method that many use when judging. Flowing helps you keep track of the arguments in the debate. These notes are for your eyes only and won't be submitted to the tournament staff. Let's take a closer look at the flow sheet in your judge packet. Each wide column on the page represents a speech given by a debater. NCFCA changes topics or resolutions every year, and you'll notice that this year's resolution is at the top of the flow sheet for you to refer to if needed. The columns marked A are for when the affirmative team will speak, and the columns marked with an N are for when the negative team speaks. The first half of the speeches are called the constructive speeches, indicated by a C at the top of these columns. The constructive speeches construct or build the arguments in the debate round. Cross-examination follows each constructive speech. One debater will ask a series of questions of his opponent, but the debaters will face the judge and not each other. While there is no dedicated space for cross-examination notes on your flow sheet, 
You can take notes during the cross-examination on the back of your flow sheet or on a separate piece of paper. The last half of the speeches are called the rebuttal speeches, indicated by an R at the top of these columns. The rebuttal speeches respond to the arguments already introduced in the constructive speeches. As you can see, the Lincoln-Douglas flow sheet is very similar to the team policy flow sheet. Resolution, affirmative and negative speeches, constructive and rebuttal speeches, and cross-examination. Now that we have identified the sections of the flow, let's talk about how to take notes or flow the debate round. During a team policy round, you begin by taking notes on the first debater's speech in the first column. During the next speech, you will take notes on the opponent's speech in the next column by writing notes beside each corresponding argument. As you take notes throughout the debate round, you can flow an idea or argument across the paper. As in team policy, for Lincoln-Douglas, you begin by taking notes on the first debater's speech in the first column. In some Lincoln-Douglas rounds, you will be presented a negative case as well as an affirmative case. If that is true in the round you are judging, you can take notes on the negative speaker's case here. You will write notes that correspond to the affirmative case here. As you take notes throughout the debate round, you can flow each idea or argument across the paper as it is addressed. Now that you've taken notes, there are several things you can should consider as you determine which team wins the round. Did the debaters use sound logic and analysis? Did they use compelling and respectful argumentation? Adequate support? Academic integrity? Did they use effective and gracious communication? These are things you should consider as you make your decision. The ballot is where you will record your decision and write feedback for the students. This section is where you will record which team won, affirmative or negative. A double loss is very rare and only used as a disciplinary action against both teams. At the bottom of the ballot is where you will record your reason for decision. Debaters would love to know what critical arguments or issues were that pers persuaded you to vote the way you did. Suggestions on how to improve argumentation are also helpful. When we judge debate, we are evaluating two separate components. The first is winning the debate. The second is speaking well. We've already discussed how we evaluate students for winning debates. Now we'll discuss how to evaluate students for speaking well. When we judge the speaking part of the debate, we evaluate each student separately. This is an individual speaker box from your ballot. In each speaker's box, you will evaluate the speaker in two ways. You will write helpful comments based on their presentation in the comment box, and you will rate the speakers. The speaker point guide on the back of your debate rules and guidelines is available to assist you in rating the speakers in the six categories listed. Then, you simply need to total the speaker points. Once you have evaluated the speakers, you will need to rank the students and compare them within the round. The speaker point totals will determine the speaker's rank. When you compare all of the speakers in the round, the speaker with the highest point total will get the first rank, the next highest point total will get the second rank, and so on. Sometimes you will find that two or more speakers have the same speaker point total. The ranks, however, must be different and you will need to decide which speaker will get the higher rank. Remember, debaters are judged for two separate things, winning the round and speaking well. Win-loss decisions are not determined by speaker points. Eloquence is a necessary part of good communication, but eloquence alone does not guarantee that a team has met the standard for winning the round. The team with lower sp speaker points may win the debate round. When judging, please make sure to keep in mind the following guidelines. Stay in the competition room for the entire round, monitor any distractions, and use an ink pen to complete the ballot. Don't ask questions about the debate or give verbal feedback to the debaters. Don't use your phone during the round as both texting and talking are distracting. And last, don't mark your decision in view of the competitors. If you have any issues during the round, please let the communication staff know. As you are judging, it is important to note that debate is primarily a verbal activity. 
Please do not request written material directly from the debaters before, during, or after the round. In the rare instance that you have a question about the evidence presented, you may request to review it for clarification or accuracy at the end of the round by speaking with a judge orientation staff member. As soon as the round is over, take your ballot to the judge area for completion. Then, submit your completed ballot to the ballot return staff as soon as possible. If you have questions, please see a member of the judge orientation staff. Remember not to consult anyone else about your decision and keep your decisions confidential throughout the tournament. The debaters will not receive their ballots until the tournament is over. Once again, thank you for sharing your time with us. If you will be staying to judge speeches, you will need to attend a separate speech orientation. But please feel free to enjoy the refreshments in the judge area. They're there for you. Also, please don't hesitate to let us know if there's anything we can do to assist you. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoy your time with us.